can I can I just like this is purely hypothetical because I'm being a bit ridiculous. But if that point was there, yeah, it would still potentially be closer to that one than that one, but yeah, it might be on. Yeah, so should we run that? We can run that now. All right, so I mean, well, let's try that, right? Okay. I haven't run this, so let's see. So, all right, so suppose our point was over here. The algorithm we use is ever going to turn out slightly differently. So we're going to go from A down to this side, sure. And we're going to go to B to this side, E and G again. And we're actually going to end up in the exact same place we ended up in before. So the first thing we do is we say, okay, so this is our minimum distance. Let's draw that in so we can see it. So it's sort of, that, that's our minimum distance. Right. We go up and we say, okay, um, we're, we're back up at E. Could, could it be over here? Right, and that's that's the first question. Well, no, not really, because the distance this is distance here. If I move this over to this, there's still this much gap. But this is this far away from me, so it, there's nothing that can be in here that can be closer than that. Right. So then we move up to B, and this is where your example is slightly different to mine. Right. Because on B, this is our minimum distance, but actually something just over here could be closer. So what we do is we look down here, and we say, okay, it's D next, and we go down, and we find that this one is miles away. And we don't need to worry about it. So you're basically doing the same thing, but at a different node. And yeah. Different so way. when you get to it, when you're working your way back up the tree, you get to a node. All you need to do is work out the distance from that node's sort of dividing line and the and the current minimum distance, and just make sure that there couldn't possibly be something on the other side. And that's because you've got those components of x and y, and you can do that. Sort yeah. Of thing. You can change like how you design the tree and how you do these tests slightly, and but you know. It's much of a muchness. It's usually quite uh, quite similar. One thing you can do, and it's quite common, is you might want to find the sort of the k nearest points in a KD tree. So now the two k's are different, um, but you know you might want to find the ten closest points for some reason, right? And if you want to do that, then what you're going to have to do is instead of holding just the current lowest distance, you have to hold the ten points and the ten lowest distances, and then do the same comparisons. Nothing changes. It's just you've got slightly more comparisons you have to do, right? But this can be easily extended to those kind of problems. So it's like a reverse exponential. Yes, and there's a word for that, right? Uh, the logarithm. It's a log. It's a logarithmic. It's a logarithmic function, <laughs> it's right? How long is it since I yeah, it's log to base two. So essentially, the deeper you get, in some sense, the it, it, it plateaus out and it doesn't get that much worse, right? Within reason. Now, if you have many, many dimensions, there's still a lot of work you have to do, and there are some downsides, right? First of all, this only really works for points. Right? And there's another kind of data structure which is pretty cool called a bounding volume hierarchy, which perhaps we can look at in another video. But you know, for points, this is pretty, pretty good. There's obviously exactly how you create this. So for example, suppose your data was very, very bunched up in one dimension. That's not going to help much. Right? You're still going to do a lot of these silly comparisons beyond on the other side and things like this. So splitting when it's all nicely spread out, like my example, it works very, very well at dividing things up. Sometimes it would work less well, and depending on your data. And also, it's, it's not absolutely known you know, whether I should be doing x first or y first. There's no real good answer to that. You could try and optimize it, but as soon as you start trying to search through different combinations of ways to create this tree, you, you know, it's going to get slow anyway. Right? There is some overhead in actually creating the tree, of course. For millions of points, that's not trivial to do. Um, and it takes up memory, um, but it's quite quick, right? And you've got, you've, got, you've got to think much, much faster than a list, you know? Um, and there are some data structures which make searching for things very, very quick, right? So you can do like a binary search on a list, sure, right? But um, it's not going to help here because you'd have to order everything and you've got multiple dimensions in which you, against which you've got to order and you, you know, uh, it gets it, it doesn't work very well. So this is a, I, I really like this data structure because it's so good at this specific problem. Right. Um, the only other downside, of course, is it's it's not that easy to move these points around and change the tree. Right. If suppose I add another point in here, well, that's pretty easy because I just have to look at this node and just split it along this line, and I've done it. But if I add a bunch more points, it might be that the configuration I'm in now is not very good. It's not at, these aren't the median anymore. And so then what you've got to do is you've got to sort of, should we say, invalidate part of a tree and recompute it and it takes time. This works well when you're doing things like iterative closest point because you're taking two static sets of points and just sort of moving them around using, you know, um, matrix multiplications. But you're not adding more points or taking more points away, at least not very often. So it does make things a lot easier. And if, if, the, if it's moving kind of imagery, 
you'd have to do the tree again every time, would you? Yeah, pretty much, or have some kind of quite expensive reconfiguration and rebalancing of a tree. So a balanced tree is one where pretty much everything has two children, you know. Um, you may not have two children right at the end, because this one might have one, but this one might not, for example. But in general, everything has two children. So the distance you have to go down the tree and back up is the same, roughly, depending on regardless of where you look. If you didn't balance it properly, and there were hardly any points on this side, and loads of points on this side, then if you happen to choose a point here that you need, um, you've got a lot more work to do than you did here. Right? So, you know, it is, it's a case of trying to keep it balanced. If your tree becomes unbalanced, you might have to do algorithms to rebalance it or recompute it.